that's just a good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, you guys. I'm gone two weeks. You don't take. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be had. <laughs> Today we're doing some fun hymns that uh, are not in the hymnal, by golly. And, um, Ron and I sat down and talked about the ones we wanted to do. And there are two of them that we're doing. Because He Lives, you know that one? Because He Lives. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one is, I love to tell the story. And let's begin by singing that. I love to tell the story.
think it should be, and I keep bugging them about it, and they say, Pastor, sit down and be quiet. So I want to do a love and tell the story. Let's begin. Won't you please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of your innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let's do the intro, Psalm 121. I lift I my eyes to the hills, hills, from which my help come. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your building out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth.
be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, during this his earthly ministry, your son Jesus healed the sick and raised the dead. By the healing medicine of the word and sacraments, pour into our hearts such love toward you that we may live eternally through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated and be healed by hearing the word of God today. Lamentations, the Old Testament. The steadfast love of God never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says the soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke of in his youth. Let him sit down in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust that there may be there may be his hope, may be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes. Let him be filled with insults, for the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict and grieve the children of men. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. There you go, you got it. Let's go to Second Corinthians. These people <coughs> are finally getting it. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. Isn't that interesting? For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own free will, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints, and this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first. I'm going to read that again. But they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urge Titus that as he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. Well, that word grace, campers, you remember that word grace? But as you excel in everything, in faith and speech and knowledge and in all earnestness and by your and in your love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace. There it is again. Also, I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. And that for so that you by his poverty might become rich. I do not mean that others should be eased and your burden, and you, you, bur you and your burden, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance in the present time should supply their need, so that abundance may supply your need, and there may be fairness. And it's written, as it is written, whoever gathered much has nothing left over, but whoever gathered little has no lack. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you stand and sing the Alleluia? The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Jesus had crossed again in the boat unto the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him, and a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for twelve years, who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his garment. 
For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried, and she, and she felt in her body that she had been healed of her disease. <coughs> Excuse me. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about around in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed in, of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing that, what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And, he said, and when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the father, the child's father and mother, and all who were with him and went in where the child was. Then, taking her by the hand, he said, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately, the girl got up and began walking, for she was about 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement, and he strictly charged them that no one should know this, and he told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We say what we believe and what we stand for in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, be God and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's sing. Because he lived.
beginnings, new beginnings, new things happening. By the way, uh, talk to the elders, and we're going to put this television set up there so you can see, like, uh, and when we do iMag, right, a picture of me above me. <laughs> you ever see those guys in the, uh, uh, the big, the big, big, big churches? There's iMags in front. We'll probably not do that. But I wanted to see to show you that uh, we just can't do the old ways. The old ways are good ways. We're going to keep doing them, but there's new things that we have to do. You can't spell the gospel without go. It has to go. We have to do something. Because we're not doing something, then we go in reverse. Uh, I saw some pictures in the post office of people that you might know, right, on the, on the wanted. So I thought you... We want to see this one. There they are. <laughs> That's Carla Meislin and Joyce Warnke, and they're at uh, Lexington, Kentucky. And so they're, of course, all the women wear the special hats, right? And so they're at the LWML convention, and they're just getting on the plane, right, Dean? Yes. They're just getting on a plane to come back, so I just can't wait for them to tell all the LWMLers and all of us about the missions and things that are they're all about. And we see she says, run the race. And Lexington 2021. So there's a special picture. Just one. We'll use that later for propaganda. <laughs> right? But there's another one. You know, I went, uh, Gary said, uh, go to the camp. Why don't you go to the camp to the closing camp thing? And I thought, that's a great thing. So I got there. And it was 312 degrees. It was hot, man. I lost, like, I don't know how many pounds I lost. But uh, don't laugh, Justin, because your picture's next. Because <laughs> here we are worshiping. There he is. <laughs> We're keeping these nice different color socks. He's ready to go. He fit into the camp perfect. It was just perfect. Uh, the camp was all about, what was the word? That, Cara, that the camp was right. Grace. They all learned about grace. That's right. It was an amazing camp. We yeah. went swimming. Yeah. They were, we had a lot of fun there. Yeah. All right. And Jody, did you you got all done as a little bean, didn't you? All suntanned. Oh my goodness, great. Yes. How about you? Yeah. If you take a second to realize, he's wearing mismatched socks. He's wearing mismatched. Yeah, I, I said that. I said that. Bye. You have to wake up. Wake up. I know you're tired from camp. Did you meet any pretty girls at camp, or should I even have? <laughs> now I'm not going to ask. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. But anyway, so it's all about grace. The kids were all about grace at camp, and I thought that was a pretty neat thing. Uh, but this song, because he lives. And of course, because Jonathan was in a hurry, he messed up the little lines and stuff like four times, and they find What can you do if you're in the middle of the service going, okay, just fake it. So we did pretty good, didn't we? But we don't have to fake it that he lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow, no matter what. See, he's given us a hope. He's given us a grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. He's given us everything. We didn't have to do anything. He did it all. He gave us forgiveness of sins. And we sit here today. He gave us rain, too, which I thought was neat. We need the rain. He gives us everything that we need, doesn't he? Especially forgiveness of sins. He forgives our sins. He gives us the gift of eternal life. That's the most important message today I want you to know. Forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Because he lives. And I thought it was really neat, the second verse. Take a look at the second verse. What does it say? Open your bulletins. What does it say? Yeah, holding the newborn baby. So I got a chance to hold the newborn baby. Oh, I should have put those pictures. We, we baptized this newborn baby. And uh, so I know I was supposed to take a break, but I couldn't help it. I had to do something spiritual, so I baptized my grandson. Uh, it was really neat. There's a creek that runs through their property. And I said, why don't we use this water to baptize them right at the creek? And they have this, um, you know how sometimes you baptize and there's a, a shell. It looks like a shell that you put the water in and all that stuff. Well, they didn't have a shell. They had a hot air balloon pot holder thing. 
where you put your spoons on, so we cleaned that up. So I baptized him with this hot air balloon because my son and my son-in-law, my daughter, own a hot air balloon company, and uh, they have grown and grown and grown. And so we went to the creek to do this baptism, and my daughter says we're not using the creek water. And I said, why? It's running fast. It's great video, and I'll be showing that. You know, just moving. I thought I'd take the baby down, you know, and baptize. She goes, Dad. That water comes through the stockyards first. <laughs> We're not using the creek water. <laughs> so we went out and uh, baptized the baby, and I thought that baby had made no decision. Jesus decided everything for that baby. For August Emerson Graham, name in the book of life. That's pretty neat stuff, isn't it? No decisions had to be made by what Jesus made a decision for him. And so you'll see pictures, and of course my wife is like, ah, she's just happy as anything, because there she is with her grandchildren and things. It's a neat thing. And uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to go to Korea, South Korea, if my uh, passport gets here. If it doesn't, i got to go to Arkansas to uh, Bill Clinton's city and get my passport and come back, get a copy of my passport. It's crazy. And we're going to go over and bless those, that family, too. It's a neat thing. Because he lived, August, Emerson, Graham can face tomorrow. Because he lives, you can face tomorrow. No matter what happens. And when it says, the, the third verse says, when I fight life's final war with pain, I know that he reigns. And uh, I don't know about you, but I didn't realize there was so much pain until I had this, name, this uh, sinus uh, thing going on. And they gave me these, this pill that said for acute pain, and I was in pain, so I took it, and all of a sudden, ooh, I didn't know, I forgot I had pain in my back and my side, but this is good stuff. I'm going, okay, Mary, take this. <laughs> <laughs> because um, it was, I was out of pain. And that must be what it's like to be out of pain when I'm in heaven. Out of pain when, uh, out of no tears anymore. I'm going to be in heaven. It's going to be an amazing thing because he lives. I can face tomorrow. What is tomorrow for us? What is tomorrow for this church? So while I was uh, tending to babies and to uh, toddlers, this little toddler, uh, Declan, isn't that an interesting name? His name is Declan. Um, he is not talking much right now. He does this. But he does more. He screams at the top of his lungs. And he goes, ah! Like that. And that scream just kind of goes through my whole soul. And I go, Mom, take the baby. That's the good thing about being a grandson, a grandfather, right? You can fill them full of candy, whatever you want, and you set them up. Set them up. But I was thinking about the church and praying about our church and what God has in the future for our church. And then when I went to camp, he reminded me of my first camp experience, and I got to tell you this, you will get a kick out of this. How many people ride horses can ride a horse? Okay, so I went to Camp McQuantico. That's what it's called. I have no idea what McQuantico means. It's probably some ancient Indian something or other, but I went there. And uh, spent a week there, all boys camp. And they had all, everything, they had everything. They could shoot guns. Real guns, real bullets, I'm going, well, they probably wouldn't let you do that anymore with shoot guns, and there was a art place where there was a kiln, so they did the kiln work and all that stuff, and they had horse rides, and it was my captain's turn to go on horse rides. Now, this little boy from Anvil, Wisconsin, has never been on a horse, so I was kind of apprehensive anyway, you know, getting on the horse, and then getting on the horse, because they had the, like two or three of the counselors had to lift me up and put me on the saddle and I'd just sit there, hold on to the reins or the, or the, the horn here and the horse knows what, to, knows what to do. And the horse will not be the first horse, he'll be like in the middle so the horse will follow the other horses. So I'm thinking it's like, like sitting in an easy chair, you know? No, but the horse is like this, going everywhere. I'm going, I gotta keep my balance on this, right? And the horse is doing this, and then the horse goes down, I'm going, whoa, down here, and the horse walks around. Now that horse has been on this horse trail 
hundreds of times. So he knows what's going on. And I finally got comfortable with it until we got to an open field and the horse saw the barn. And he started to go and he starts to gallop. And I'm going, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, help, help, help. And all the counselors are going, what's the matter? And the horse is, he's probably not galloping, but it sure felt like he was trying. <laughs> gallop, 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 I'm going, I gotta get off, I gotta get off. So I got off. And I laid down on the saddle, my stomach on the saddle, going, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. Can you see it? I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And the horse went, and, and I was, we were fine, we got there, and they let me off the horse and said, I can see the counselors going, we're not going to let this boy back on the horse ever again. But I was scared. It was something I'd never experienced before, right? And the horse just went to, where do you think the horse went when he got to the barn? To the trough to go and eat and take a drink, because that's what happened. And I thought to myself, isn't that the way it is with my life? When God has things planned for me, he wants me to do things, and I'm not quite sure what it's all about, see? But someone encouraged me to get on the saddle, get on the horse. And today I think God is talking to us about get on the horse. Get on it. Get ready. Move where I want you to move. Well, I didn't know where that horse was going. I had no idea that he was going to gallop or anything else. I didn't know any of that, right? So here I am. Just like we are, getting ready to get on the horse of what God wants us to do. To take the trail that he has designed our church to take. And there's lots of signs that we're looking at. We did a ma we're doing a master plan. We never thought about doing that. He's got this master plan. I think he's going to work to decide how it's going to look, what's going to happen. And i got to tell you, it's not just sitting in a recliner. We're going to be bumping around a little bit, aren't we? As we're looking at different things going, whoa. And all of a sudden, the horse takes a little dip down here. Our, our plan takes a little dip, thinking we didn't know we were going that way, and we're getting a little scared. It's okay to be scared because God takes you to the place where you can see the future and experience the future and know that he lives, and he knows what's going on, and trust him. He's talking about trust. And sometimes he's going to make this church gallop. And it's going to go fast. And don't do what I did. Stay on, well, stay on the horse. No matter how you stay on. You have to lay down with your stomach on the saddle. That's fine. Because God's got something really neat planned for us. Why? He's got something really neat planned for us because... He lives. He doesn't want us just to sit around and say, He lives. Now, some people will do this about, I'm using the horse trail analogy. Well, I'm not going to get on the horse right yet. I have to study about the horse. See, I have to study about how saddles were made. I have to do all this studying, all these things, before I even think about getting on the horse. And I don't know what the horse is going, what kind of water is the horse drinking. I don't know how long is the horse, you know, all these things you can do to delay you getting on the horse and going on the trail. And I have been in churches who will study all about evangelism, all about reaching out, all about telling people about Jesus, but never get on the horse, never go and do it. And I'm so glad that I'm part of a church that is not like that. We study. We know about God. This book of Acts is just an amazing thing. This week, again, we learned all sorts of things that God had planned for Paul and that he didn't know they were coming, but they were there when they needed to be. I want to encourage you to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as he makes changes. I have no idea what they are. Changes to the building, changes to our ministry, changes to whatever. The the thing that people don't like sometimes is change, but being a part of being an adult is accepting change. Hey, I didn't know that Jesus suffered and died on the cross until somebody told me, and now I believe it. It's a change in my life. How has God changed 
your lives? What is he doing? How is he shaping you personally for changing your life? An amazing, amazing thing. Be ready and open. Be ready and open. Even if you have to wear mismatched socks, wear mismatched socks. He's got that yeah. for you. Yeah, Dad, yeah, Dad. Yeah. We're going to give you a bad time all the way. Lord, I'm sorry. So don't say this. Come weal, come woe. Our status is quo. We're not going to, our status is going to change as we are open to what Jesus has to say to us and what he commands us to do. You remember the seven last words of the church? I'll tell you what the seven last words of a dying church are. We've never done it that way before. <laughs> We're open to change. We're open to that. And why are we? Because he lives. We can face tomorrow. Because I know I have a future. That's an easy thing, yes? And you'll experience God's grace in all of that. Be ready. Who knows what God has planned for us? All we know is that we trust him. And that he's going to be there for us. May God grant it to you in this church, in your life, in your family's life, everything in your business, that he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and ever. Oh man, all right, now, you see, I've done so many bulletins, and I've done some of them better than others. <laughs> let's receive our offering. And as we receive our offering, let's sing on eagle's wings. This one, huh?
pray today. Uh, let me see. How's Alyssa? Not well. So we're praying for Alyssa. Her cancer has returned. Keep doing that. How's Helen? <coughs> Helen is better. Doing all right. And uh, let me see. What else can we be praying for? Right here first. My cousin, or my aunt, Julia, she recently got in a car crash. Two parts of the spine of her legs. Ow! Two parts. What's her first name again? Shalina. Shalina? Shalia. Shalia. Yeah, like Princess Leia, but with a she. Okay, well, there you go. I got it. Yes, Kara. My prayer for Brooklyn. She also got a car crash. Just been a long car crash. Yes, and how, what's her first name again? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Anybody else in a car crash this week? <laughs> All right, Dean. Uh, sorry for Luke Graves. He's a little boy that has cancer, and anyway, they took uh, him off everything and spread and, and give him a very short time. I hate cancer. I just really do. Let's pray for uh, Carla and Joyce. They ha they just had too good of a time. <laughs> we'll have to get them back here. Any other prayers over here? Betty. Let's pray for Betty. She, Betty requested uh, eagle's wings, and now she wasn't here. So. Kara. All right, what's her first name again? Dorothy. Dorothy. Old Dorothy is what you're saying. <laughs> hey, what do you think is... No, I don't want to know what you think is old. <laughs> yes. Sure. Yes, sir. For my pig. For your pig. Yeah, she's pregnant. For your pregnant pig. She's getting a little silly. Yeah, she's in a silly mood. Are you ready? Because... When yeah. anyone gets pregnant, they get in a silly mood, don't they? Yeah. Any other prayers? Yes. Pray for Richard today. Ah, uh, it's crunked. And we tell him that we're thinking about him. And don't say I said it in German because it's bad. I said it in German bad, I'm sure. Anything else? For William Wicked Camp. Week at Camp William. You're going to learn about grace. I'll bid you, don't get, let me see your face. I'm going to see you Friday at camp, camp closing. So it'll be a good stuff. Let's pray. Now you can stand. Lord Jesus, thank you that you protected me and my wife as we traveled for a vacation. And thank you uh, in advance for protecting us as we go on into Korea. We pray that, uh, we pray against cancer. We're just done with it. And we pray that you would heal the whole world of cancer 
starting with Alyssa <coughs> and Luke. If you would heal them. Father, it looks like you're going to heal Luke by taking him home and ultimately healing him. But uh, take care of him. And the people who have had car crashes uh, for uh, Shayla, 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 his aunt, and for Brooklyn, we pray that you would protect them. And for Helen, thank you that she's doing well. Help her get better. For Carla and Joyce as they travel back to be with us. For Betty, who is not feeling well. And John, by the way, also we're praying for him. For Dorothy, that you would protect her in her old age, whatever that means. We're praying for William as he goes on to camp. We're going to have a good time here. And for Richard, as you would heal him, uh, not feeling very well, so you would protect him. All these prayers we pray in your strong and precious name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go to page 11, the preface, as we begin. Okay. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god through jesus christ our lord who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant being obedient unto death even death on the cross risen from the dead he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabbath, and Lord of Holy Hosanna. took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you this too in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
May this body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life eternal. Depart in his peace and his power. Your sins are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven. Amen. Sing the Nunc Dimittis. Oh. 
to the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. You may be seated as we sing our final hymn.
Uh, announcements, Gary, you had a birthday of 90, how old are you? But uh, birthdays this week, flowers, anniversaries, 35 years. She put up with you for 35 years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Well, there you go. All sorts of different things happening. Kids at camp, we're going to go again this week to see all the kids at camp. Also, take a look at your uh, 2021 July uh, calendar, and you'll see everybody's... Uh, it's interesting because we're cleaning our records out, and I put someone's name on that had died like 10 years ago, so I had to take that off because we're not going to celebrate their birthday, but there's all sorts of ones, and I thought this was the neatest one on the 13th. Tanner and Emily, Ted and Audrey, Randy and Pam, anniversary on the same day. And your parents, why well, should have put them on there? You know, there's other, there's 364 other days. <laughs> That's all planned. That's all planned. I thought that was really neat. Are there any other announcements to be made? I have one. Uh, ju next week, July's fourth, uh, worship completely different. We're going to pledge allegiance to the flag. We're going to pledge allegiance to the Christian flag. We're going to watch some great videos that are going to make you cry. Why? Because they made me cry. So we're going to do that. We're just going to salute what God has done. And the, the theme of the whole thing is one nation under God. Under God. Under God. That's right. God is the one. All right. So that's going to be fun. Gary? Uh, weather report. It is probably still going to be hot when I get Oh, okay. So I'll wear shorts because I wore long pants. I'm going, I didn't bring any shorts to uh, prior because I always wear long pants. I brought going to get a pair of shorts. But no pictures, please. <laughs> God bless you. Love me. Have a great day. And remember what? God, God gave us.